everyone and welcome to The Green Room. Really happy to have you back with us today. My name's Claire Beatty. I'm Senior Director for Customer Marketing here at Genesis. My co-host is Ginger Conlon, uh, Thought Leadership Director. Ginger is joining us um, from, uh, uh, actually Ginger, let me tell you where you, you say where you're coming from. So I am attending the ICMI show in Orlando and I am currently at Lowe's Royal Pacific Pacific Resort. So if you hear a little bit of island jazz in the background when I talk, that's why. Okay, Ginger bringing some island jazz. Um, and our special guest uh, for today, today's show uh, is Marty Hand, who's VP of Technology at the Hotline. Uh, so in the green room, we often talk about um, empathy, empathy and customer experience. Um, and Marty, for you at Hotline, empathy is not just important it's potentially life-saving in every interaction so we're really excited to learn from you today about the customer experience so ginger why don't you introduce the, the topic yeah so as as claire said we're going to talk about uh the hotline and how it approaches empathy not only person to person but also through digital technologies that can enhance and assist it through the whole journey, which we'll also talk about how it's how that is very different. Um, but before we do that, you know, the green room is about bringing on the heavy hitters in the industry that can share their expertise. And so, you know, we'd like to have a little bit of fun before we get into the serious topic. And so we always, you know, these heavy hitters, they always have their expectations of what they need in the green room. And so, um, Marty, Marty, why don't you tell us what your specific request was for today? Well, I'll give us, I'll give us all a hint. So, um, Marty is a fan of chocolate peanut butter. And so I have a Reese's, but Marty has very, very fancy chocolate peanut butter. So you want to give us a show and tell? Absolutely. The uh, the beautiful chocolates uh, that are, uh, again, if you've been in the candy industry the way I was for many years, the, uh, uh, the decorations on the top of these are absolutely astounding. And they're quite delicious. Thank you. They're, they're really wonderful. Excellent. Well, so um, with that, let's dive into the to the meat of the show. Marty, tell us a little bit about your role and about, about the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, uh, it's the only 24-hour hotline dedicated to the needs of survivors of domestic violence and intimate partner violence. We provide compassionate support, life-saving resources, personalized safety planning via phone, uh, online chat, text, and uh, obviously from uh, resources on our websites as well. Uh, as the VP of technology at the hotline, my role is to coordinate and integrate the various technologies that are needed to support survivors that we serve, to support the advocates in the work that they do, and the various team members across the organization. Now, as I mentioned before, um, we were going to talk a little bit about journeys today. And you know, a customer journey is one thing, but the survivors and their their um, family and other members of the community who may be reaching out to you have a very different experience. Can you talk a little bit about how that's different? Absolutely. Thank you for that. It's uh, it's a unique challenge for the hotline from uh, from an engagement perspective. In a traditional sales and uh, fundraising environment, there's a typical cycle that you see, right? And we, that you hear terms about sales cycle and donor cycles and even support cycles for technical support uh, service organizations. But that's simply not the case at the hotline. Um, uh, we are a confidential service, which means that we, if someone contacts us multiple times, we don't know it. And every interaction is a unique and standalone conversation. 
So uh, we don't have that tie together of this is what they said before. This is what they're saying now that the changes through it. That's all for their safety, right? We are here to serve survivors and ensure their safety. But the same way that there's no typical cycle, there's no typical survivor either. Uh, everyone, uh, every situation is unique. Every survivor is on their own unique journey. And they're not there, there is no point A to point B that they're going to pass through. We can't catch them at one point and help move them through. They, uh, this is their own personal journey that they've got to take. Uh, and we're there to be able to help make sure that we listen to them, understand what their, their situation is, affirm their experience to make sure they understand that what they're going through is valid and not question themselves. I uh, help educate them on how different forms of abuse can play out. Keep in mind that abuse is not simply physical, as horrible as that is, there are lots of different types of abuse. Financial, uh, digital abuse has become very um, prevalent in this day and age. So there's a variety of different types of abuse and they can play out differently. And then we'll provide resources and referrals uh, to local providers. Well, we're a national hotline, we have the largest directory of all of the uh, providers, local providers for domestic violence, intimate partner violence survivors. Uh, and we will make referrals out to all of our contacts from that directory as well. Marty, I think it was really interesting to hear about some of the different types of, of journeys that you have and how that might be different to um, another kind of organization that we're working with. Um, and in in serving your the survivors better, you've made some significant changes to your technology environment over the last couple of years. Tell us what journey you've been on from a technology perspective. Yes, it's been uh, rather astonishing. Uh, the hotline was established in 1996, and since then, we have answered more than six million calls, chats, and texts. The time it takes for us to handle a million keeps getting shorter. It took us seven and a half years to answer our first million. The next million took just two and a half years. Uh, so the volume just continues to go up and up and up. Uh, in 2022, the most recent full year of data, we had historical con contact volume. Uh, we were receiving over four, or excuse me, over 2,000 contacts per day uh, in, into the hotline. The pandemic really supercharge the need for a 24 seven support, uh, as well as making the complexity for the survivors, serving survivors a lot more difficult. Um, uh, during the pandemic, there were a lot of uh, shelters that had to close down due to COVID outbreaks. There were hotlines that were uh, physically based in a building and they had to, to uh, shut down or re-engineer themselves to be able to support folks in a new remote environment. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our mission is to try and make sure we're answering these contacts as quickly as possible with as, the compassion that's needed and to ensure that, that survivors are getting served. Well, with the pandemic, um, uh, again, volume just continued to go through the roof. And that's when we really saw this huge switch uh, well, I'm, I'm going to call it a switch, an increase in volume on the digital side, right? The majority of our volume used to be on uh, on voice, but now uh, post-pandemic, we're now seeing the majority of the volume coming in on the digital channels, both web messaging and uh, SMS texts. So like many of our, uh, any other hotlines, you know, we need to maximize our reach with very limited funding, right? Uh, uh, so we decided to make changes to the overall platform uh, to keep survivors safe. Uh, we keep learning more and more about people, where people are in their journey and how we can meet them there. Uh, and I think SMS is a really good example that we didn't offer SMS prior to the pandemic uh, for the hotline. But during the pandemic, as folks were forced to shelter in place, potentially with an abuser, their ability to place a phone call to talk to us was very limited and their access to a computer was was uh, possibly limited. So 
SMS kind of became that common denominator of technology that people could could access. So we recognize that and very quickly move to implement that um, as part of the major changes for our customer experience. That's really incredible. And what what like what uh, what have you, have you seen as the impact so far from some of those changes? It's been um, massive. So first, when the pandemic hit, uh, we were one of those organizations that was based in a physical building, and we had to send everyone to work from home. So literally over the course of three days, we equipped our entire staff with computers that, uh, to set up at home. We uh, migrated off of our existing telecom platform onto Genesis Cloud and uh, didn't drop a single call, didn't drop a single uh, web interaction and uh, were able to maintain 24 seven support. Um, it's been able to provide us uh, you know, a lot more flexibility for our advocates who are um, who are supporting the the uh, survivors. Improve some of our shift coverage since they're no longer having to drive into an office. We've actually maintained the work from home for our advocates even post pandemic. Um, but the most recent piece, we've been able to do a uh, provide a better overall experience with selective use of bots to help us uh, reduce call times, gather the limited information that we do capture about folks, but a key thing being able to optimize the time that advocates spend with a survivor, making sure they're comprehending what the situation is and being able to provide them with the guidance and resources that they need instead of using that time to, to capture uh, demographic data that uh, is important for a lot of the work that we do on the policy side. Absolutely. So you mentioned bots and you mentioned data, but as you said, you have you know, restrictions in what you can collect and, and use. But can you talk a little bit more about how data and AI are playing a role? Happily. Uh, we're at the start of our, our AI journey. Uh, Let's talk about the data first. So we do collect data. It is confidential. It is non-identifiable. Uh, we do not capture phone numbers of the people calling us. We actually never even see that. The way we uh, we were fortunate enough to partner with AT and T, they they built a solution that strips that call uh, caller ID information from the call before it ever lands on the Genesis platform. So we don't see that information. Um, but that again means that every interaction is a standalone conversation, which makes it difficult to analyze. Again, we can't we can't piece together any two interactions to try and create a, a story about one particular's journey. Um, but we can't. Uh, while we can't personalize the experience based upon all of that, um, and especially since disclosing any of the data that we do collect is voluntary. Right. We don't require any of the age, gender, race, city. We don't require any of that uh, information, um, but we do request it whenever possible, because that information is really helpful to provide to law to lawmakers, policymakers, uh, to donors. They want to know who they're helping. Right. And so that data is really critical for us to be able to, to capture. But when you look at our website, it, the audience of people that comes there is varied, right? Uh, we have multiple stakeholders, uh, survivors, friends and family, uh, donors, law enforcement, reporters, people just wanting to learn more about it, uh, about intimate partner violence, about healthy relationships. And we want to make sure all those audience have the uh, a, uh, have a, an experience that serves what they're looking for. So AI has been able to uh, provide some additional empathy within, within our platform to make the process a lot smoother for survivors, um, as well as for the advocates. I mentioned earlier by reducing that handle time. Again, there's really very few times of day when we don't have people waiting in queue to speak to one of our advocates. The volume has just gone so high. So anything we can do to reduce handle time means we can answer more contacts. So by introducing the bots, giving the 
uh, the, the, the survivor the ability to provide us that information up front before they ever speak to an advocate and then to also tell the advocate in a quick phrase what it is they hope to get out of the conversation that helps to prepare the advocate when they receive the interaction all that information is presented to the advocate so they can now uh, be in a better position to support them before every interaction was a blind answer they didn't know anything about the person on the other end male female non-binary age location what they were looking for so now that helps to prepare the advocate a little bit better to have the conversation uh, with the survivor um, so again anything that we can do to help reduce that handle time the just the bots alone have reduced our handle time by about a minute when you take that across a couple thousand interactions a day that's more survivors being served and you talked about you know the the experience that you're providing to your advocates and just you know, just thinking about what the the kind of interactions they're having on a daily basis that must be incredibly stressful for them particularly as you were saying like during covid knowing that people were perhaps you know with their abuser in a situation they can't get away from they must need a lot of support from you how do you help them deal with some of these types of interactions yeah, I have the utmost respect for the work that our advocates do. Uh, I attended a subset of the training that, that our advocates go through, uh, which is a four week in person, well, now online training, uh, but with live instructors. Uh, all of our advocates are professional full time employees. Um, but I have the utmost respect after hearing the things that they have to hear from survivors each day. Um, and uh, Many of our advocates are survivors themselves, so that secondary trauma is a real thing. It's a challenge to help keep them healthy and and uh, able to support others. Right? If you if you aren't okay, it's hard to help others. Uh, one of our Genesis partners, uh, Inflow Communications, introduced us to a new company called Thrive, and uh, Thrive integrates with Genesis Cloud to automate these 60 second videos called resets that incorporate uh, calming visuals, sounds, breathing techniques uh, to help de-stress in chart times of uh, uh, anxiety and uh, doing it all in real time. We always offered the ability for an advocate to take a reset moment, but now we actually have technology in place that uh, will uh, provide these resets to advocates when certain conditions are met, when either an advocate, uh, an, excuse me, an interaction goes for an excessively long time, or when an advocate uh, handles multiple uh, interactions back to back to back without taking any kind of a break. Uh, this is all based on some neuroscience from Stanford showing that it only takes 60 seconds to interrupt a stress response. Uh, it's uh, It's been really well received by our advocates and and uh, we've been really thrilled with the partnership that we've been able to develop uh, with Thrive. Uh, we also make sure again we talked about how trained uh, how much training they go through there's continuous training that we do put them through. We have sessions we call letting go of difficult calls um, to try and help them give them the ability to express the the stress and, and difficulties that they're going with. Um, but it's important to note too that at the hotline uh, anti-oppression work is critical to us it means we're engaged in a process of co cultivating diversity equity inclusion belonging for all staff uh, regardless of what their role is and part of that is of course encouraging self-care making sure that uh take you take care of yourself the way that is going to be best for you again as no survivor is the same no two of our employees are the same and everybody needs a little something different to help take care of themselves so it's not about being self-indulgent indulgent it's about having tools available to you to cope with the stress when it's needed yeah that is that is so important and one thing i have one more question for you but before i jump sure. into that i just want to let everyone know that um it's very important for Genesis to support our customers and our community. And so we have uh, set up a matching um, campaign with Benevity for the hotline. Uh, the link 
is in the description and we'll also put it in the uh, chat after. So please you know, support the hotline and all the wonderful work that they're doing, um, which of course never ends, Marty, right? You're always trying to improve the customer and the, the, the uh, survivor and the advocate experiences. It's a never ending journey. So you know, what's next? So, as I said earlier, we're just at the start of our AI journey. Um, we're always innovating. Uh, we're planning a uh, fast search tool for being able to identify shelter availability. We actually have a pilot that we've already been working on with uh, 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 an organization uh, called GER out of Georgia and the Family Place, a shelter organization in Dallas, where uh, the shelters can report to us the availability of beds in their shelters. So as you can imagine, if a survivor calls us and what they're looking for is shelter space, it's nice to know uh, before calling a shelter if they happen to have uh, beds available. And during the pandemic especially, that was very difficult. Bed space is very, very hard to come by in a lot of cities around the country. And so uh, to arming our advocates with that information up front, again, helps to reduce handle time. It was not uncommon during the pandemic for our advocates to have to reach out to six, eight, 10 shelters before they might be able to find a shelter that, that believed they had availability that would be appropriate for that survivor and we could transfer them uh, the call over to them. And uh, that, you know, be able to reducing that down so that you have high likelihood of someone. That's a major project that we're looking to expand on. It's currently working in Texas, but we're hoping to expand it uh, nationally. But AI, is, uh, it's enabling us to serve a wider audience by selectively guiding those people who aren't in crisis, but who are looking for preventive support or specific resources such as legal advice, shelter details, counseling, immigration support, whatever. Um, uh, so we're, we're exploring ways to train chatbots to provide culturally appropriate support to those who are not yet at a place or where they are comfortable to discuss their situation with an advocate. Uh, it's not a trivial effort, especially considering the chatbot engines that have recently ignited all the fascination. Uh, they've been trained using a wide variety of sources that are not always going to be contextually correct factually accurate or appropriate for domestic violence and intimate partner violence survivors. The cost of giving an inappropriate response in our industry can have life and death consequences. So while we're investigating how to apply this technology to serve survivors, we're using it to help identify those who are not in crisis to be able to get the uh, those contacts to the most appropriate uh, resources available while we work on how we can train these tools in a way that we are confident the responses that we're giving to survivors are the correct responses. Marty, thank you so much for sharing your incredible story. We are just so proud to be part of supporting you and your advocates supporting survivors as well. Um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Marty, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone who joined us in the audience. Uh, if, I could, if I could say one thing really fast. Absolutely. Again, anybody who is listening to this, if you need help, if you have, you know someone who needs help, you can reach us 24 hours a day, seven days a week by calling 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 800-799-7233. You can visit our website, thehotline.org, or you can text us, text the word START to 88788, and an advocate is there to help 24-7. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you for doing that, and we'll put that into the, uh, into the comments as well. Thank Thanks you. again, Marty, for joining us. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the green room again next time. All right, thank you. Thank you.